um, but yeah. Uh, let's move on to our next topic. Uh, Rad Puppy, do you want to kind of in- talk about it? What you wanted yeah, to talk sure. about today? Yeah, sure. Um, so I don't, I think this was like a week ago or maybe something like that. Um, some information came out about companies that applied for PPP, which is the, uh, paycheck protection program. Um, basically giving out loans to people, uh, during COVID. Um, Mm -hmm. so phase clan was among one of the esports orgs that have applied and they were granted, I believe like $2 million dollars. So I think an interesting question is like, is this something that they are, you know, taking advantage? Because under COVID right now, a lot of content creators and esports and and all these orgs in general are making a little bit more money, especially the higher people who are already up there. You know, the rich kind of get richer right now in terms of that. So I would like to know your guys' opinion. Do you think that, yeah, do you think that they're taking advantage? Like, should they have taken, you know, um, that much money brody i want to hear you say ppp because apparently <laughs> you're fine I'm, I'm, I'm fresh. um i just heard pp and i'm like <laughs> um, uh but uh serious in in adult conversation um we also need to consider that um investment isn't revenue right yeah, so like that true. that's not something that will count towards what they made for the year and do we know if Face Clan is profitable. I mean, most large esports orgs are not profitable at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, like, it's, that's <laughs> the thing. Is, they're, they're, they're among a very few, though. There are a lot of esports orgs yes. out there that are still losing money to this day. Um, yes. Having esports teams costs a lot of money. They don't take a lot uh, when it comes to prize winnings. A lot of orgs only take like maybe 15 to 20%. Mm-hmm. Not even that sometimes. And that's not, a, that's not enough to make back your money. You're hoping um that you're getting enough sponsorship deals um you're hoping that you're selling merch um so i mean phase phase also wouldn't be surprised me if they were making a lot of money and tried to pull this i mean like look at the things they tried to pull before with um what was that that player that turned out to not be old enough um you know maybe that's not on phase you know i know you're talking about a kid lied about his age and signed the contract yeah um so they've not they've they've been the center of some controversies before um yeah as actually a lot of esports orgs have, but um, you know, phase phase isn't uh, they're not new to this, so it wouldn't surprise me. But at the same time, it also wouldn't surprise me if they really weren't making a lot of money and that they do qualify for this. I feel like at the end of the day, you know, the um, IRS or whatever is gonna check to see if they qualify for this too, right? Like they're um, otherwise they're gonna be hit yeah. with fraud because and that's not gonna be good. Um, mm-hmm. So are they shuffling money around behind the scenes to hide it? Mm-hmm. Are they actually qualifying for this? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, but I also wouldn't be surprised at the same time to see them doing something sketchy. Right. I think I'm in, I'm a little in the middle as well, kind of where Brody is. Although at the same time, like I think with FaZe Clan, they're a bit of a special case of esports organizations because from the looks of it, maybe somebody can prove me wrong, but from the looks of it, it looks like they're way more tailored towards the content creation side of things right. more than they are like competing. Um, like they compete for sure, but... They got people like Nick Merckx yeah. or, you know, they, they used to have someone like Tfue and that's something that I'll talk about in, in just a moment. But like you look at someone like Nick Merckx, for instance, who they just not recently, Classic. but yeah, exactly. Huge, huge streamer uh, now pulling in like 50K concurrent streaming Warzone. You know, he's abs- and now he's partnering with Activision Blizzard for Warzone stuff, which is crazy. So like definitely no matter what kind of deal he's made with FaZe is pumping in a lot of money for the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, speaking of TFU, there is a large kind of public, obviously sort of behind the scenes because it's legal issues, uh, dispute going on between them. Uh, and I'm sure that they've probably had to expense a lot of resources and spend a lot of money for their legal team to kind of combat it. So, yeah, I'm probably I'm a little bit in the middle. They could be they could be doing some some shady stuff because I could see that happening. But also, who knows how much money is being spent, how much money is being made behind the scenes. I guess we just will never really know. Yeah, but I, hate- I, I agree as well that the government like they probably have to do their due diligence before they yeah provide and, and that it, kind of money, right? And it may not 
be immediate. Like, it does take time. Like, maybe next year, though, we'll we'll see an article go out that FaZe owes all this money or not, right? Like, but Brody um, does bring up a good point. Like, a lot of esports orgs are kind of struggling. I know, like, right now, yeah. it's a time where streaming, we're seeing lots of tournaments go online, and it's kind of a boom for esports as a whole because sponsors have all this money now that they can't put towards events. So they're looking to teams and content creators on those teams to um, kind of help them make their brand more public. But what happens behind the scenes is you don't see that money for a long time. Like sometimes it's like 60, 90 days, right? So that's a lot of time between ha you having to pay all these different people. So they may actually qualify for some of this relief right now because technically right. they're not raking in all the money from all these online streams, all this like boom that's happening with esports and content creation right now with partnerships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. What do you think about... Um well, this this might not really uh, be related, but I actually saw the other day someone in FaZe Clan, I don't remember who it was, but they were like, oh, I just bought this Lamborghini and then they got it like all painted and everything. And so like, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, obviously business the individual. <laughs> he needs it for the job. The business. <laughs> That's a business expense. He's writing it off. It's completely okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I'm just, I mean... I didn't really get to do that much research because to be honest, I did. I wasn't sure what to expect from this podcast. I, w I didn't really know. <laughs> and when, when we asked for topics, I was just like, uh, what do I got? I don't know. Boom. Here you go. Um, so, but just whenever I see anything involving phase, it's just, there's always mm -hmm. just so much. Um, they have a lot like circulating around them in terms of mm -hmm. their audience. They are just like probably one of the stronger, if not the strongest, brand like you know branding for orgs mm -hmm. so yeah. i guess i guess just as for me and i'm comp not that well informed it does kind of just seem like they didn't really need to do it but then again i i do understand there's so much that goes on beyond um beyond like what we can see yes. in yes. terms of like their content yeah. and marketing i think you're i mean like you're right to bring it up it's a good thing to the question because like yeah when you see that you're like okay you know it, how can he afford this i mean I guess that that could just also be a disconnect in in communication behind the scenes. You know, this the top guys that are um, don't realize how much this guy money is or how much money this guy is making. Um, and you know, this guy his salary is good enough to be able to buy a Lamborghini, but mm -hmm. you know that's part of their expenses, and they can't they don't have enough money for these other employees. So these guys now have to go sure. on this program. Yeah. So it's like it could just be you know. Uh, bad management, people being overpaid. I'm sure that's uh, pretty common. In, in, <laughs> yeah. In yeah. Well. Um, so yeah, I, I, f I feel like you're not wrong to bring attention to it because they have been um, at the center of some sketchy moments before. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you'd hope to, to see that cleaned up and it, they've been out of the spotlight for a bit, but yeah, I, I'd be questioning it too. Yeah. I, I wouldn't just be sitting by and be like, oh yeah, it's probably all makes sense. No, yeah. for sure. It, it's a weird time, right? Because, you know, companies are struggling to pay people. People are struggling to pay rent. Um, so you really have to have trust in these organizations that if they're looking for relief, that they have things in place where if a player is making income or, you know, they're a million dollar, you know, player, they have, you know, worth, net worth um, or a content creator you're hoping that the organization somehow is putting in place where the people that may be working behind the scenes for much less money are still able to pay for their living expenses through specific programs that they phase may have in place for all of their employees, right? So it, it's going to be interesting when, I think when all of this lockdown talk, when COVID is done, we're going to be finding out a lot more about how these orgs manage in this time. And it's going to be really telling to see if certain orgs took advantage of situations or if they didn't. True. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I have hope in the East Coast. Have hope. Scene is, uh, it's asking yeah. a lot. I think we're going to see a lot of restructuring of these orgs as well, too, once they start to... I mean, here's the thing is, like, um, up to this point and still probably a bit in the future, esports is a very, like, it's a new, like, relatively newer market compared to more established markets that are decades and decades old. You know, we've only had high level, um, and when I say high level, I mean, like, lots of money involved in esports for probably the past real, like, decade, maybe decade and a half. You know, that's maybe where it started, but, like, 
it, it's still relatively new um, and a lot of people are still trying to figure out what works where do we make money we know there's a demographic we know they're all these kids are gonna have jobs soon they're gonna have money um and i think that's it's why you see just the video game industry so big is because kids like us uh that grew up with gaming now have money we're buying video games so that market's fine but the esports market is still developing it's still um it's still a, a little baby of a market trying to figure out yeah. what it needs to do so you're yeah. going to see i think a lot of restructuring of what an org is and you, you mentioned earlier I mean, a lot of them are going for content creation because that mm-hmm. seems to be a lot safer bet you're reaching more of that demographic um because now not only do you have streaming you have youtube as well which is a huge market and it's just um, kind of easier too right like mm-hmm. hey content creator guy you want to do exactly what you're doing right now <laughs> have our logo on it it's like yeah. Oh, yeah. sure yeah and you it's, know? it's way less volatile too i mean yeah. like you yeah. get a team you get a team in esports um you don't know if they're going to be good next season mm-hmm. they yeah. they could fall off and all of a sudden you're relegated and and now no one cares about your brand and now exactly. you gotta either a try to stick it out or b drop that team by another one uh like it, it it's a it's super volatile so orgs mm-hmm. are still trying to figure that out and that also comes to the structure and management i mean yeah. you look at a lot of these there's a reason it's called face clan these guys started way back when cl- everyone had a clan. All the bros yep. gaming had clans, right? And it was like, yep. they, they, they're they just... That was an Xbox homies. thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they're just homies, though, that, that have, they didn't go to school for management. They don't... Sure. They're not CEOs of large... No. Uh, companies. They don't know what they're doing. Right? <laughs> exactly. So a lot of a lot of people are, are just figuring out what to do right now. I, I think that's why you see a lot of problems across video games and esports across a whole slew of topics is because it's a bunch of people that kind of stumbled their way in there without any formal training on what they needed to be doing some are doing great with it some aren't doing great with it um so you're seeing uh a lot of that start to finally be figured out and that's why um you know you'll see boards being made with people that actually have that experience now people being hired um that know how to do that stuff so i i'm pretty sure you're going to end up seeing phase clan being one of those two that'll see a huge restructuring with who's at the top and who's running it um sure it loses maybe a bit of that you know uh video game esportsy feel but i feel like yeah it's i think it's an inevitability i mean you you have to have you have to know what you're doing i i think there's some some esports dudes as i said that uh uh know what they're doing i mean you look at 100 thieves i think you know they're founded by esports people and but i think they they have a much better management um yes. mindset to them they they know how to deal with that stuff a lot yeah. better but yeah, not everyone does people from like the outside i think same with mm. like c9 or mm. cloud9 yeah. um yeah, and, and, actually saw them bring in other people and that's why they're going to do better because they realize you know what i can't do everything i don't have the expertise for this I, uh, let's bring someone else in. We can still keep the vibe. I can still oversee everything, but I'm going to need someone else to make those decisions. Um, and you're going to see that with a lot of different orgs, I think, too. True. And maybe included. that's where the money is going. Like they're just bringing in so many new people to kind of help them run. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe that's where that two million is going. <laughs> yeah. If we want to be Could helpful. Be. <laughs> uh, yeah, if we're thinking glass half full on it. Yeah. Or or it's going to Lamborghinis for yeah. every, <laughs> every player. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think someone uh, in chat said it right. It's just like yeah, that sometimes that does come down to the individual too. I mean, yeah, yeah, if totally. they're making that money, that's on to them. That doesn't really mean the rest of the company's not struggling. It just means their salaries inflated a bit. But um, plus, a lot of those players too have their own deals, right? Brand partnerships um, that they may have as well. Partnerships, so it doesn't yes. necessarily reflect the organization's partnerships and what the organization is paying them. Um, so someone, oh, Stealth Gamers said that PlayStation 5 page on Amazon US is live yeah. right now? What? So I was, I was waiting, uh, I was waiting for us to like wrap up this topic to talk about it because yeah, so the Amazon page for the PlayStation 5 is currently up. No price, but all the, all the details that we already know about are currently up on Amazon. I'm assuming this is because that, that price reveal that's heavily is, rumored yeah. is like imminent, but I don't know because Yo, Amazon, be it's insane. weird. It's weird that there's like an Amazon page for the PlayStation 5 right now. And they're like, here's the PlayStation 5. You want to buy it? Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll sh- earlier today, Australia's Amazon as well, uh, their site had a page go live for PlayStation 5. So it is probably yeah. happening sometime today, but we may not get to it in this podcast, which sucks. Or they also heard the rumors and think it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, 
like, all right, we need someone to make this page really quickly because it's going to go on sale today. They, they have no prep for it, right? <laughs> They're working well, guess... with uh, Caboose's people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 